Steven says, what's the best way to send out an automated email each month to a client? I have posted this before and did it with flow, but that seems to be gone and my prior flow automations don't work any longer. Interesting scenario that flows are disappearing and don't work anymore when they once did. It, it makes you wonder if the flow was accidentally deleted or maybe shared with another user. And when you share a flow with another user, it, it, it's kind of removed from your initial landing page within Power Automate and it goes into, I think it's called the shared tab. And uh, it could also be uh, uh, not working because of things like password changes to the account that you're tied to, uh, 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 your, what is it, uh, to, the, to the action or the connection, I should say, yeah, right, uh, within the context. flow. Yeah, so it could lose its context. So that might explain why it's broken. Why it goes missing, I don't know, but I do like the idea of using flow to to build out your uh, your customer emailer. What does everyone yeah. else think? I agree. I mean, I yeah direct link that I threw in there. Send an email on a schedule. They've got a nice template for it. So, um, two things to remember with Flow: one, whoever makes the Flow originally, um, that's the license that it's tied to. Um, so, first of all, if that person leaves um, the company and that account is deactivated and the flow has not been officially shared or reassigned to another account, um, then that can end the flow will stop working. Um, in addition, this also could be that a light, it could be a licensing issue. So um, whatever account they use to set up the flow, if that license has you know been disabled or didn't get renewed or there's an issue with it, um, it'll make it appear like flow is not working um, even though it is. Um, but that particularly licensed um, piece isn't making anything happen. Those are the, yeah. the only things I can think about. I, I agree, flow is the best way to handle it, but it sounds like there's probably some identity or licensing issue that, that could be causing it to look like it's broken. Yeah, the point you raised, Sharon, this you know brings us back to the days of creating service accounts to run things in. And though you can't exactly Justify. do that power automate, um, you can designate users and, you know, uh, users you want to run flows within and treat them specially. You know, think about old SQL DTS packages or Windows services and those sorts of right. things. We always recommend to every client that's going to be using Power Automate uh, for enterprise processes of any sort um, to create a service account and tie all of their flows initially to that service account. Um, or at least share them with the service account if it's going to be in a, you know, a, a personal flow um, and to understand that the personal flows could potentially die when the person leaves. And that's just yep. how it is. So it's been a problem since day one. And the advice, the expert advice out there has been, you know, service accounts around that. You run into that with every client. Yes. In fact, um, we also recommend that whatever service account they use for all those flows, that that's the one that they tie the power. We, we get a power apps license for that particular account um, because then it covers unlimited flows and the power apps that they're going to be building with the service account, as opposed to worrying about the users because, you know, users can only create a certain amount of flows per license. But if you get the power apps um, monthly and assign it to the service account, it essentially I'm not going to call it a hack, but it's a different it's a creative workaround.